Hey gamers, today we're going to review The Voyages of Marco Polo and the expansion Agents of Venice. Let's check it out. Alright, to set up the game, what you're going to do is take a stack of contracts here. You're going to distribute them out right there. You're going to put your black die in the area there. Take these big city tiles and they're flipped down like that. You're going to shuffle through them and randomly put them out in each big city. The game comes with additional big tiles, so there's a lot of variety there. Uh, you also have these uh, little tokens for the little cities, and they already have a letter that corresponds with a letter on the board, so you'll put them in those designated areas. Uh, you will also have these cards. You'll have a deck of cards, actually, that you're going to shuffle through. These are the ones I haven't even used. So as you can see, another, a lot of variety once again in each, what, what you'll put one out in each big city space there, so there will be different actions for every game. Just no game, no two games will ever be the same in this case. You'll also have two player tokens. One will start right here. The other one will start on the 50, which is basically the zero. As for your player board, there are four different colors you can play as. Uh, a regular player board will look like this. The first player will get six coins, uh, second player gets seven, third player get eight, so on and so forth. Uh, coins also come in denominations of ten. They're really neat, these little cardboard tokens here. Uh, first player will get the hourglass here. They'll also start with one contract that will go right here. They can hold up to two. Uh, they'll start with two little camel tokens. They'll also start, you'll randomly uh, draw through these cards and have little goals of where you can travel throughout the game and how it works by the end of the game if you were to travel to let's say both of these places uh, Sumatra and Ormonds you would get six victory points however if you notice at the bottom here they do have extra bonus points if, you, if I was going to only visit one of these during the game then I would at least get one victory point if I visited one on each card well I wouldn't get the seven or six points but I would get three victory points at the end of the game if I visited both on here and one on here that's three that would give me six victory points and if I visit all four not only only would I get both of these victory points, but I would get 10 victory points as well for completing all four. This is, comes in handy with in-game scoring. You can score real big by traveling. Uh, you'll also have your own set of dice here. You'll have five die. You'll also have these little buildings here that you'll be putting out in these cities. And as you see, if you can put out all of your buildings, the last two actually give you bonus points of five and 10 victory points if you're able to distribute them out across the board. Next, each player is dealt one of these characters, which give them superpowers in the game, and then you are ready to go. Now, at the beginning of the round, you need to uh, reward any uh, upfront uh, beginning of the round rewards. How you can tell by that, anything with an exclamation point on it, you can award that customer or that player at the beginning of the round. So for instance, this player, if someone's playing as these two people, they would get a camel at the beginning of each round. Also in the smaller cities, like this one, if anyone, ha everyone who has a house here in Ormonds would actually start every round with three additional camels. So you would give those out at the beginning of each round. After that, everyone's going to take their five die and their nice little wooden die, and you're going to roll them and then put them up on your board. Now, if I was to roll a 16 or lower, I would get uh, some compensation for such low rolls. Your compensation can be three coins or three camels, your choice. Uh, once everyone's rolled, then you're ready to play. Uh, now, what you're going to be doing is you're gonna, this is dice placement, you're going to be placing die around the board to do various things. The first thing you can do is, of course, travel. By placing two die here, as you see on this emblem there, you can travel up to that many spaces. So for instance, I put two fives there. That means if I paid $18, I could go five spaces. Now, obviously, I didn't start the game with $5. My guy only started with six. Egad. But if I was to put a five and a one, now what happens when they don't match? It's fine. You'll just go by the lowest number, which in this case is a one. So that means I'm only going one space and paying three coins, which I can easily do. So I do that, pay three coins, and I would move one space on the board. I can move up here or I can move here. Now, if I'm going to move here, if you see, there are camel uh, icons on that path. And some of these paths, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, you'll see they have camel icons on them. And if so, that means you have to pay that amount of
on a camel to travel that route. So if I wanted to go here to here, I'd have to pay three camel. And as you see, three camel here, three camel here, two camel there, and so on and so forth. Also, if you want to travel by sea, you'll notice that it will count as money. You have to pay some money if you're traveling by sea. So that's in addition to the amount that you had to pay to travel. You may have to also have to pay additional coin or camel to travel. Now speaking of travel, when you travel to a city, you're going to take the little bonus reward, which in this case would be a black die, and then put your little house there, and then put your house on any one of these four spots. Now, a player cannot have more than one house in one big area, and of course in a four-player game, each player can play a house there. Uh, and then that would get not only give me uh, a check mark for Alexandria, if that was one of the places I needed to go, but it would also allow me to utilize that uh, city special ability by placing a die right here. And depending on the number die that you hit would allow you to do this action X amount of times. Now when it comes to travel, at the far end of the board you'll see Beijing. And Beijing is really neat because the first trader to get to Beijing and put a house there will get 10 victory points. Second place gets 7, third gets 4th, fourth, fourth gets 1 victory point. Also at the end of the game there's a little emblem here that says hey for every 2 goods you can cash them in at the end of the game and score an additional victory point, which is always good. So in this case, if the die was a 1 through 4, I could take advantage of one of the special abilities in one of the small cities I had a house in, or a 5 or 6, I could take advantage of two places where I had a house in, one of these small cities here, and they're talking about these little blue icons here. Okay, so other things you can do. You can go and get resources. Gold, uh, I guess this is linen, pepper, and camels. And as you see gold here, you need to put three die there. And just like on traveling, you're going to go by the lowest die. So for instance, I have two sixes and a five. Well, then I would go to five and I would get three gold and I would get to travel again if I can afford that travel. So that'd be pretty neat. As you see, to get the cloth here, it, you just put any two die there and the lowest die is what you would count. Or for pepper and camel, you would just need to put one die and then you would get the reward for whatever it was. Another place you can go is place a die right here and you can get five coin. You can also get contracts here by placing a die there. If you placed a one through four, you would grab that contract there. If you place a five or a six, like let's say I had a six here, I could grab this contract and either get coin or camel, and then I could also take another contract in the one through four spot. So that's why it says one slash two contracts. Now you can never have uh, two, uh, more than two contracts open at one time if you see on my board I already had one so I could only grab the six and put it here I couldn't grab a second one but if I had completed this contract I would put it over here and then I'd have open room for another one but you can't have extra contracts sitting on the side now speaking of black die whenever you either get one of these or maybe sometimes on contracts as you see when you complete a contract you'll get a black die whenever you get a black die what you're gonna do is take one from the pool here roll it and then add it to your player board and you can only you can only use it for that round that means after the end of this round it will be put back into the regular uh, pool for the black die there another action you can take is you can put a die here any number die and you can claim one of of any type of resource or two camel. Now resources, by the way, come in these little tokens here for cloth, pepper, and gold. There are also bigger tokens uh, to signify a three. So that would be three camel, three pepper, three cloth, or in this case, three gold. And you can use that to kind of clean up your player board there if you're getting too many resources there. Now how this goes is the next player who plays in this line has to play a one or greater. Now if I would have played a six, that means everyone had to play a six to get that reward. And once all four spots are taken, no one else can use this until the next round. And then finally, another thing you can do, if you just don't have anywhere else to place your die, you can place as many die in this little pouch you want to, and you'll get one coin for each die that you have on that pouch. Now let's talk about contracts here. If ever you were to fill, fulfill a contract, a free action, that means it wouldn't count as one of your regular dice placement actions, would be to complete this contract. So let's say I had two pepper and a gold and two camel. I'd trade this in, I would get four victory points and an extra contract from the stack. Now once I've completed it, I'll flip it over and put it right here under my completed contracts here. And as you see, there's the number seven there. At the end of the game, whoever has the most completed contracts will get 
a bonus seven of victory points. As you see, some of these uh, contracts give you black die, or they give you more coin, or they'll give you extra resources, or a free movement, you know, if you complete it, or maybe some extra camels. It, they just give you different things, and they're all various. Uh, there's a whole, like I said, a whole stack of these that you'll be playing out throughout the game. Now that we talked about dice placement, let me tell you what happens when players play on top of other people's die, because you can. Uh, you would just have to pay a certain penalty. So for instance, let's say green player got here first and yellow player wants to travel. Well, they can play on top of green player's die, and that's perfectly legal, except they have to pay the amount of the lowest pip count in coin. So for this case, two is my lowest amount, so I'd have to pay two coins to take this action. So that's two coins plus traveling seven, uh, two spaces, which is seven coins, which would be nine coins just to travel two spaces. So that's why you want to get to these first, because they kind of get expensive. You're going to need money to uh, take that action. Again, same thing here with the linen. You know, if, if green player got that first and uh, yellow player went next, in this case, they would have to pay, let's say they put a five and a six in, they had to pay five coin in order to get that bonus there. And that's for all of the spaces that you see are in blue. Now, now, the only difference is right here, if someone were to play on top of that uh, green player there, they would only get four coins instead of five. Now, the only rule is once you've played, once your player's played on that one, like green, for instance, they cannot play on top of this color because they've already played in that area. So you can't play the same color more than once in any of these spaces here. And then, of course, on the brown spaces, you may not play on top of another uh, player's die. You may not do that. And so that's what makes these city uh, cards even more important because it's really the first person there gets to take advantage of that until the next round when someone else can do it. And of course, anyone can take advantage of any of these big city tokens uh, or big city cards if they have a house there in that city. So after everyone's done and they've made all their plays, you're going to clear the board of the leftover contracts, deal out more contracts, six new contracts, gather up all your die, and then first player is going to pass this to the right or left, and then they're all going to roll their die and start another round. Now there are a few other free actions you can do on top of fulfilling contracts that I failed to mention. One would be with your camels. Uh, you can discard a camel to re-roll one of your die. So if you didn't like that roll, roll again and maybe you'll get a better number. Or you can also uh, remove, you know, discard one of your camel or two of your camel to raise or lower the pip count on a die. So a one or make that two, a three. Why would you want to lower it? Well, if I was to put a two and two here, but I wanted to only move one space, I couldn't say, hey guys, I'm only going to pay the one. No, if I put a two there, I have to pay seven. So in order to lo lower that, that and save me some money, I'm going to discard one of my camel, turn that two into a one, and therefore only have to pay three coins just to move that one space. So those are free actions you can do, the two camels and any contract actions. So for instance, what I mean by contract action, in this case, you could complete this contract, move, and then place one of your die to do another action, because contracts would count as free actions. Now, you'll keep doing this until all the contracts are gone, and by the end of the game, whoever has the most points wins. Okay, so next I'm going to show you the Agents of Venice expansion. Uh, this one comes with a fifth player, a purple player. You get purple die. They give you some extra houses and extra camel tokens as well. Uh, the game also comes with some extra destination cards, uh, some extra little city cards to shuffle, and I have a few of the new ones out already. You'll get some small city tokens to place out too in this game. And how this works is you would lay this little strip to the side of the board, and then and players can travel throughout Venice here. Now, as you see, there are some costs involved in certain places where you go, and how it would work along this track, you would just place one of your die there, and then someone would have to place a four or greater, or you know, whatever number this was, they could play the same number or greater across here, and they'd start off by placing a house right here. Now, the second time, let's say green player did this again, well, they could either place a house, follow these lines, they could place a house there, or they could come around here and place a house here. 
here. And so that's basically how it works. So you'll be wanting to plant houses out through all here and get to the top there. At the top, everyone would get three victory points. And this is a permanent, this isn't a card, this is a permanent uh, benefit here to either travel or get additional uh, victory points with your cash, uh, whatever you want to do. So that's just an additional thing, additional place you can go when you're playing with five players. Now the game also comes with uh, new characters that you can play as. Also has a little mini expansion called Companions. What you'll do, you'll shuffle a deck like this and place them all out. They all look the same here, but you'll place them out across the whole board. And what would happen is someone pays any uh, die there, uh, they would get one resource and then they get to flip it over. And for that round only, they can take advantage of this ability. And the game will, the rule book tells you what each ability can do. This one shortens your travel a little bit there. You can kind of tell what they do. It gives you, you know, minus one to fulfill a contract and plus or plus three victory points when you fulfill a contract. And so all these little companions do something for you for that round only. Afterwards, they're all dumped back in, shuffled back through, put down face down, and then dealt out at the bottom of the board for each round. And now I'll talk to you about the little two mini expansions for the game. This is the new characters. Comes with some new contracts, a few new characters. Also comes with this extra little city token. You can place this on one of the cities. And as you see, anyone with a house there would get a gift token. And gift tokens are basically just little bonuses in the game. Like they can get extra camel, uh, extra material there, you know. Uh, just do, they can do different things. Uh, the, rule book, the little rule book will tell you what each gift icon does. But it's pretty self-explanatory. The next one and the final one is called the Secret Pass of Marco Polo. It comes with this little additional, it also comes with an extra uh, character as well, but it also comes with this little city token here that you'll play and whoever has a house on that little city token will get to have one of these little shortcuts, Secret Pass. So for instance, if I had this one, this one lets me go to Moscow to Saramakanda in one move and avoiding those extra moves and spaces. Now if you don't like any of these secret shortcuts, what you can do is you can just go ahead and cash them in for the uh, prize at the top left of the card. And basically that is the two little mini expansions for Marco Polo. Final thought, what do I think about the game? Wow, what a great game. There are so many choices with Voyages of Marco Polo. I love dice placement games, and so when I saw this, I went, mm, this sounds like a game for me. But all the variety in it, the different cards that you can spread on the cities, the different tokens that can go on in the cities, no two games will ever be the same, and there's so many strategies. Do you just go for all the contracts? I've seen people win like that. Do you just go for the voyages? Because I've seen people win like that. Do you try to balance out between the two? Because everyone tries that as well. It's just really fun. There are several paths to victory, and that's what makes this such a great game. My gaming group absolutely loves this. Now, do you need the expansion? No, unless you just have to play with five players. Uh, I haven't had a chance to play with five players yet. Um, I played with the expansion. I like it because it adds variety, some more variety. Uh, this one will take a long time before it gets old on your table. Uh, adding this to it is nice. However, this one is out of print as of this uh, review. So this one's probably not worth the 90 to 100 bucks that it's going for. Uh, to be honest, you can get it overseas for pretty cheap, regular price. I can't remember the publisher, not Z-Man, but someone else uh, overseas in Germany. They sell it for basically a, a good price. You're just going to pay extra for shipping. And by the way, if you want those little two mini expansions, it's on that same site. And for some reason, I can't remember what the name of the website is, but I'm sure someone will put it in the comments. But anyway, I got both mini expansions because I'm a completist. I have to have everything. Uh, this one's nice. The mini expansions are fun. They make the game fun. Uh, maybe even a little bit more fun, but do you need them? No, you really don't. You can just get the base game, which is still in print, and it's actually well worth your time. Well worth your time. Honestly, I love Voyages of Marco Polo. Just a super, super stellar game. All right, folks, that is all the time I have for now. Until next time, gamers, you know what to do. Game on!